Next question is from Stuart75002. We know priming is superior for getting ready for a training session, but do you see any benefits to static stretching? If so, how would you apply it? Okay, so static stretching is the old school way of stretching where you you take a muscle, you put it in a stretch, and you hold it there for a while. And then what you notice is as you're holding it, it starts to loosen up and you get more uh, more range of motion. Here's what's happening when you static stretch, and this will kind of explain uh, my opinion or our opinion on this, right? When you're doing a static stretch, you're as you're holding the stretch, the central nervous system starts to receive the signal. And initially, the central nervous system is like, protect the muscle, keep it tight. And so you've, you're tight. So you're stretching your hamstrings, you're holding it, it's really, really tight. And then the CNS says, wait a minute, I think we're okay. Let's loosen up a little bit. And it starts to dampen its signal, and you start to get more of a range of motion. So the muscle isn't actually becoming uh, more pliable like a piece of rubber. It's just the central nervous system is relaxing its signal. Mm. Now, the problem with this is when I'm going into a workout, what I don't want, usually, there are cases where I, where I might want this, but for the most part, I don't want my central nervous system to have a weaker signal because what that does is actually makes me less stable and mm-hmm. can cause more injury. Studies actually support this now. There's studies that show that Static stretching before workouts increases risk of injury. In fact, I remember when those studies first came yeah. out and everybody's mind was was totally blown. Now, to answer the question of is there value in static stretching before you work out, in some cases there is. If I want a muscle to get out of the way, I'll do it. So to give you an example, let's say I'm working with a client and they have such bad forward shoulder and, and their chest is just – their chest and shoulders are so tight mm. that – I'm trying to get them to do a row and pull their shoulder blades back and squeeze their shoulder, but they're so tight in the front that it's getting in the way. In that case, I may static stretch the chest and the shoulders to weaken the signal to them so that I can get them to pinch and pull the shoulder blades back more. Mm-hmm. But it's it's very specific way to, to, to apply. You don't want to just static stretch your body and go work out because – uh, you'll make yourself more unstable. Yeah, because of that study, and and I had the same kind of response. Like, well, uh, it makes perfect sense. Like, it, I've I've basically kind of taken all of my emphasis on static stretching towards the end of the workout. So, in, anytime I'm more in a parasympathetic type of a state versus sympathetic, so uh, where I need because through the workout you're going to need to be able to brace, be tight, and you know, on command. And uh, for the end of the workout where I'm trying to really now recuperate, I'm trying to, to, to start that process of, of recovery. I think it's very beneficial for that, especially in areas where you found sticking points and you found restrictions in terms of, of gaining access to certain ranges of motion. Like I'm going to hone in on those areas and I'm going to take my time, nice, like slow, deep breaths, get my heart rate down, uh, and, you know, and hold those positions into a relaxed state. So that's really where I find the most value for him now. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you, and I and I and I would challenge uh, what Sal was saying a little bit, just because I used to do the same thing. Like for example, like a common one for me to static stretch before like squatting would be like my hip flexors, because my fl- hip flexors would get in the way, right? My hip flexors were tight, shortened, right, and I'd be pulling me forward when I get into a squat. Um, I don't need them to be super active to to fire when I'm squatting. So I want to get them out of the way so I could squat better. And I do think that it actually works. But what I have found is you can do priming exercises or mobility drills to accomplish that same thing. Better. That it, better. Yeah, I agree. So, you know, not that static stretching it, you, it can't be useful for certain things. There, even where it is applicable, like what Sal said, and what I just gave as an example, I still think that there are, are mobility drills or you know, quote unquote, priming drills that you can do that are superior to that anyway. So, yeah, I, I'm with you, Justin. I think that for the most part, it belongs post workout or throughout your week, right? When I'm, you know, the next day after I had like a hard training session and yeah. I'm I'm static stretching my piriformis or my hip flexors or something like that. Um, that's where I see the most value. Static stretching is relaxing. Yeah. It's very relaxing. Um, you know, you might not want to do priming session right before you go to bed, right? Cuz yeah. it might be it might stimulate you and it's hard to you. sleep, right? Yeah. Static stretching before bed where you're breathing. By the way, if you want to make your static stretching effective, remember what you're trying to tell your central nervous system to do. So I I, I you know, for my my wife uh, for a while she traveled with uh, Cirque du Soleil. This was her, her previous life, right before she met me, and we, and you know, I made her boring or whatever. <laughs> she can't do any of this anymore. <laughs> but she used to travel with the circus and work for them, and she learned 
how to get really extreme ranges of motion from uh, some of these acrobats and athletes. And so they did. These were Russian athletes, and they did some intense like static stretching, right, oh, yeah. on, on top of a lot of other stuff. And she's and she, so I would stretch with her sometimes at night, and she's like, "You're holding your breath. Like your CNS is not going to relax because you're telling your CNS to stay tight." She's like, when you do static stretching, you need to relax your body and breathe because it's also mm -hmm. receiving that signal that it needs to protect. So the whole process of static st stretching, if you're doing that as part of your protocol, let's say you want to really increase, because it, okay, for increasing range of motion, it's the best. Mm -hmm. It's not going to give you functional yeah, flexibility. Focus on the exhale for yeah, that. You gotta, yeah, you have to totally relax your body and, and put your body in that parasympathetic state. So post-workout is excellent before bed. It's great. Like if you are tight or anxious before bed or, or, you know, whatever, get into these static stretches, breathe your way through, even though it hurts, tell your body it's okay to chill out. It's okay to relax. And it's great. You'll sleep incredible from, uh, you know, from doing this.